GUI, grabs pointers to the GUI, grabs the ID that got passed, and then asks the database object to return the one contact that was selected. It gets back a list, but by definition we know there's only one item on the list, so we pull, or we, we point to the first item on the list, and we grab the properties out of that, and we set those elements on the screen to the values that we pulled from the cursor. So that is, in a nutshell, the view mode. All the other ones are going to look real similar to this. Because by all the other ones, I mean the add, the edit, and the delete. Because all of those are doing the same thing. We're going to take and we're going to um, initiate another activity. We're going to pass data to it. That activity is going to retrieve that row, populate it in the GUI um, using the database object. Now, a couple of things that I want to bring out about this. And we'll look at two more things before we look at the next activity. Number one. This load contact task is an asynchronous task. Alright? Let's make sure we understand what that means and make sure we understand why we're doing it. Maybe you had CISS 232, the client server scripting. In that we talk about AJAX, which is asynchronous JavaScript. What does an asynchronous task mean here? I'm going to describe, oh, go ahead. It kind of keeps everything in sync, you know, kind of does it at the same time simultaneously going through it? Um, it, it does relate to the timing of the activity, all right? Um, let's, let's try to be a little more precise, though. Which of these is an example of an asynchronous activity? I'll give you two choices. One choice is a phone conversation where I call you up on the phone and we talk about something. The other would be where I call, leave you a voicemail, and then you call me back. Which one is asynchronous? The second one, the second one is asynchronous. Asynchronous means not at the same time, all right? In fact, maybe a better analogy would be I could call, leave you a voicemail message asking you a series of questions. You could call back and leave me a voicemail message responding to them. That's asynchronous. Is asynchronous A, the prefix meaning not? Because we don't have to be there at the same time for this transaction to take place, all right? I can call you, you can be off doing whatever, I can call you and leave you a voicemail message. After I do that, I can go about my business and when your response comes and I see my little light light up on my voicemail, I can then go and pick up and get your answer and then do whatever I need to with that. That's the same idea here. In other words, this database operation that we're going to perform is asynchronous. So, we're doing it in the background. It's a background process. So, when I, load, when I want to load this contact, I create this object and all that, and I specify do in background. This is like leaving this object a voicemail message saying, hey, can you retrieve me the contact information for contact number five? So I've left that voicemail message here, all right? I then, and by me, I mean this activity,
activity can go about its business until it gets a response back. It doesn't have to sit there and wait for that object to respond back. All right. How does it know when it's gotten a response back? On post execute gets called. Think of this as being like the light on your voicemail. Alright, or a little indicator on your on your cell phone saying, hey, you got you got a voicemail. I start this process, I, I put my call, my asynchronous call, I tell that class, I want some information from you, and then I'm done. I sit there and wait until it responds. Or, I'm sorry, I don't sit there and wait. I sit and go about any other business I have going on until it calls back. When it calls back, this on post execute gets called. And then, what we can do is we can take the results and display them, which is what we're doing here. Now, why do we do this? Why is this call to a database an asynchronous call? Why don't we just call the function and wait there like we do with all other functions? Instead, we make the call, we go about our business, and then when the response comes, this method gets invoked, and we can go and finish the job. Why do we need an asynchronous call here? portion of the answer. And that is that this process could take a little while, a little while as defined in computer terms, right? You know, uh, you know, uh, longer than, uh, you know, longer than just some like simple math statement or whatever. So the, the, to get the answer, it might take a little while, you know. So what does then that have to do with us making it an asynchronous task, the fact that it might take a while to respond. You're not waiting on the response, which means that you can do other things. For example, and again, all these things are happening very fast on human terms, but slower on the computer term, you know. Let's say I am going to retrieve this, and it takes a split second, and I decide, hey, I want to back out of this, and I hit the back button to go to the previous activity. If my application was sitting there waiting, if I made a synchronous call to that method, and I was sitting there waiting for the answer, and I would not be able to handle any of the user's input, and I'd get one of those errors saying application not responding. We've seen this sort of thing also, like when we talked about a game processing. When we talked about a game processing, we had these threads, all right, for a similar reason. And that is that we wanted to be able to handle the user input while we're moving the, the pieces around, the game pieces around the screen. So that one where we were shooting our cannon, all right, we had the targets moving back and forth. That was done as a thread because we didn't want the fact that those were moving back and forth to influence the ability for the application to respond to the user input, the user aiming the cannon or shooting the cannon. So it's sort of the same idea here. It's good practice anytime you're doing something other than user input, all right, to run it as a thread or to run it as a background task. That way, your application can still respond to the user input. All right, so that's one. That's why we do this as a background uh, application, or as a background task rather. The other 
thing that I want to look at in this is if you are weak in SQL, this might help you a little bit. That is, with SQLite, you don't have to return I'm sorry, you don't have to custom write your SQL statement. There's a database query method. Where you supply parameters. And it generates a SQL statement to pull it up. So for example, use IntelliSense. Let's see if that works. In this query, we can kind of make some assumptions. That first field in the query is the table that we want to query. The second field is a list of the fields or the columns that we want to pull from that table. Because we put null, we're going to get all of them. The third part is the WHERE clause. In SQL, remember, the WHERE clause tells us which particular item we're going to get. In this case, which contact do we want to get? We want to get the one whose ID matches the ID that we've asked for. The various nulls relate to other clauses in the SQL statement, all right, such as the group by, the order by, and so on. I'm not sure of exactly the order of those, but if you look in the documentation, it will tell you. So this is a very clever way to help you write SQL statements, even if you don't know SQL, all right, by simply specifying the table that you want the columns that you want from it, and then a list of other clauses. And the only one we're really using in this case is the WHERE clause. Question about that? All right. So, I think we have three more activities to cover, um, but these should not take as long because all of them sort of follow the same template as before. All right. We have an edit activity, we have a delete activity, and then last we have a, actually we don't have a delete activity, we have an edit activity, we have a, um, add activity, both of those are handled by the same object, and then we have a delete which is not a separate activity, but it's just handled through the code. If we look here, let's look at the delete, because on our list, we create an option menu, and that option menu has two choices. Oh, I'm sorry, on this guy, on the view, our option menu has two choices. To edit and to delete. Edit is another activity. Delete is not another activity. Let's take a look at how they behave and let's see if we can come to some conclusions on why one's an activity and the one isn't.
we can edit and delete. We edit it, we get our screen, we can go and save it. If we delete it, we get a dialog and we can delete it. Now, our edit was another activity. Our delete is not another activity. Why do you suppose that is? Why is the edit an activity while the delete not an activity? Let's go back to our definition of activity. Definition of activity is more or less we're asking the user to do something. We're asking the user to, to do something, to, to fill in a form, to interact with a, a screen, whatever. All right? So it should be pretty obvious why the edit is an activity. Right? The edit is an activity because we want to pull up, we want to do very similar to what we've done in the case of the view, except we want instead of labels to be text boxes where we can go and actually change the name and address and, and email and so on. So it should be pretty obvious why the edit is an activity. Why isn't the delete activity? We're asking the user to do something, right? We're asking the user to confirm the delete. But that's really not that big of a deal, right? That's not an activity for the user. That can probably be just as well accomplished via a dialogue, via an alert that pops up and says, are you sure you want to do that? So there's not really an involved interaction with the delete, with the user. With the edit, you give the ability to make changes and all those sorts of things. Yeah, that's kind of an involved, act. it's truly an activity, something you want the, the user to do. In the case of the delete, though, the only thing you're asking the user is a confirmation. So therefore, if we look at the delete, the delete simply builds a, an alert and if the user answers yes, it creates a, another async task for the same reasons that we did before and calls on the database connector object to actually do the delete. If we look at the database connector object, that delete is done this way. All right. Going back to edit, though, that is a more involved process. So what we do is we're going to start an add edit activity. All right. And we do it very similar. The difference being is we're going to gain a, just a tiny bit of efficiency because we've already retrieved the data. Given the fact that this is a single user application on a device, we don't have to worry about the fact that the data might have changed from the time we bring it up in view mode to the time we go and click edit mode. So we don't really need to, um, what do I want to say? We don't really need to re-retrieve it in the edit view. We can simply pass all those fields over which we do. We pass the ID. We're going to need the ID for our update statement. We pass the name, we pass the phone and all that, and we fire up that activity. So we pass the data, we fire up the activity. That fires up this guy. This guy does similar to the view. The difference being that you know, it inflates the, the GUI, it grabs pointers to it. Those are edit texts instead of just text fields that they were in the view. We grab the values of those fields and we set them. We 
we first check to see if any values were passed. All right? Remember that, because right this minute we're talking about edit, but we're going to be talking about add in a minute here. Finally, we go and we look and we go and we do our save background. I'm sorry, save contact. There's a couple lines of code in here because this routine is the same for ads as it is for edits. If you think about this, what's the difference between an ad and an edit in this application? There's two differences. Difference number one is when I edit, I click on this, It brings up text boxes that are already populated with the values that were there before. As opposed to if I click add, it starts out with an empty slate. So edit brings up the values that were there before, add starts with an empty slate. The other difference relates to the SQL statement that's going to get called. If I'm adding, I'm going to do an insert statement. If I am editing, I'm going to do an update statement. So, this is looking to see if this activity got called and got passed any data. If it got passed any data, then this must be an update. So I'm going to populate those text boxes with the values I got passed. And by the same token, when I go to save it, I look to see if this guy got passed with values or not. If it didn't get passed with values, then I call an insert because we started with a blank slate. We need to insert a new guy. Otherwise, we're doing an update and we call the update method to go in and update that. And again, those have their corresponding methods in this database class. Here's the insert. It's executing an insert. Here is the update. And I'm executing the update. For each of these, I like to sort of go back and, and for my own purposes, and I think you ought to too, and go back and think about like what parts of this example are important. All right. And I would say there's probably three things that are most important about this application. The one is the manner in which we do database interactivity. The way that that database connector class works. How it creates a database, how you can actually create tables in the database and, and do all those things. Um, and how we can interact with the database and, and trigger some SQL statements to get done. The second thing is how the main process
process or the main activity relates to other activities. So our main activity is to show a list of the contacts that were entered. We have other activities to view and then to edit and then to insert contacts in here. So we have other activities that get fired off. Well, for those activities to work, they need to communicate with each other. They need to pass the data back and forth between them. Actually, it's not really passing it back and forth. It's passing it one way. All right. For example, if we're viewing it and we want to edit it, we pass all those fields. If we are um, viewing it, or if we are um, looking at the list and we want to pull something up in view, we pass just the ID of the row there. The last thing I would say that is good about this isn't really even specific to Android development, but it's a nice little lesson, that database object forms a nice little lesson um, in the idea of um, encapsulation. That database class does all of the database interactivity for this, and the, all the views simply call the methods on it. Um, I guess if I was going to add another thing that's important about this is, again, a review of that asynchronous task and the reason for that and how that's invoked. Anytime something that looks like it could take a long time um, so that the application can do other things. Um, it doesn't have to sit and wait for that to finish. It can go do other things and it'll get a call back uh, from the class when that asynchronous task finished. In fact, that's typically what they call that. They call it a callback function. And you'll see this a lot. Um, again, if you do AJAX development, there's callback functions. You know, the whole idea is, is we want to shoot these activities out there. We want to shoot these asynchronous tasks out there. But we don't want to be just sitting there waiting by the phone, so to speak, for the answer to come. So therefore, we give sort of our return phone number. That is, we give a callback function. And when that asynchronous task finishes, that function gets fired off. Now, again, the mechanism in AJAX is a little bit different here, but the concept of the callback function um, is the same. Any questions at this point? All righty. Um, that's all I had today. We'll, we'll get headed to lab. Oh, you, you quiz. Um, your, your third and final quiz, well, your third quiz, your last before the final will be like end of this week, similar to the mode that we did before.